Well, hello there, folks. How's it going today? I hope you're all doing really good. Uh, today, I have a vintage Tokai 38 Special in my hands. Uh, really neat guitar, made in Japan. This belongs to a friend. This thing is in mint condition. Not one scratch. Really clean. Hard shell case with it as well, and that's super clean too. So, basically all I did to this is uh, leveled the frets, crowned them and polished them. Had a few high frets that were buzzing and that kind of thing. Uh, this one does not belong to me. This belongs to a friend that just recently acquired it. And uh, really nice guitar, I must say. This is the first time I've ever played one of these, and I've never heard one plugged in. So we're going to do that right now. Uh, it has three pickups, and they are covered. Um, they look like a lace sensor, you know, pickup, but it's not active. It's passive. I'm going to say this is from the 80s. Uh, now, it has a five-way switch, a volume, and a tone, and that's it. I did notice this. When you flip the switch up one click, it goes right to the middle. You flip it again, and it goes right to the neck. Now... It's basically like a three-way switch, what I just described. But there is a position four in between, and there's a position two. And there's actually a notch there, but you got to kind of find it. You know what I mean? When you first use the, the regular amount of force that you would use, let's say, on a strap, where you just flip the pickup selector up one and goes right to position two. This goes right by it and goes right to position three, which is the middle pickup on its own. Like I said, you got to kind of almost jimmy the switch like you would on an old strap, but there is a notch there, but it's just not as deep, I guess. So I just wanted to point that out. So what we're going to do now is start out with the bridge pickup. And then I'll just go to the middle and then the neck. And then we'll find positions two and four and see if they sound like a strat, okay? So here we go on the bridge. Uh, let's see what we got. <laughs> Quite a bit of ring and sustain there. It's got that nice spanky kind of telly uh, sound to it. This is a hardtail bridge too, I might add. It's string through but hardtail, which might give it some of that telly kind of tone, okay? That's what it reminds me of right out of the gate. Now, strats can sound like that too, but this really just kind of points me towards telly. That's just my personal thing. Let's go to the middle pickup and see what that sounds like. Wow, really nice middle pickups. Got a nice kind of fat, round tone to it. A little bit of, of uh, edge to it, too. Really nice. Uh, let's go to the uh, neck pickup and see what we have there. Again, it's nice and round and fat, like a good neck pickup should be. Uh, I'm really impressed with the tone of this guitar. I really am. And this thing feels really good in my hands. The neck profile feels like a modern shape. It's not huge. It's got a nice, con uh, nice profile, like I said. And the fretboard feels great, too. I'm not sure what the radius is, but... It's definitely not flat. It's got just the right amount, uh, for my taste at least. So I did want to add that. This does feel like a quality guitar. 
And you can usually tell when you pick up a cheap guitar, you know, there's a lot of little things that kind of stick out to us. But this one doesn't. It just feels like a feels like an American-made guitar to me. All right, let's go to position two, which should be the back and the middle pick, uh, bridge and middle pickup. And let's see uh, if it gives us that kind of strap, clucky, out of phase kind of sound here. <laughs> Definitely has that going on. Not a real distinct cluck like a lot of strats that I own, but still it's got it, you know. Alright, let's go up to position four, which will be the neck and the middle pickup, and see what kind of cluck we get there. clock going on but it sounds mostly like neck pickup it's really fat well I guess not that was the neck pickup his position four so it does kind of drop a little bit in volume not a ton but position two bridge middle neck. Really not a ton of difference in tone between like the middle and neck and they all seem to be of pretty equal volume I, I might add too. I don't know how that came through on the camera but uh, to my ear sitting in the room here they sound quite balanced. Yeah, it's a pretty fun little guitar to play. Uh, looks like it has Cluson style tuners on the uh, headstock here. I would say they're original to the guitar. I, I have no reason to believe anything was changed on this. It's just too clean, you know what I mean? And it's got a nice paint job. It's, it's just a very slight hint of uh, metallic. It's almost candy colored like a candy apple. Very well done. No orange peel. Great finish. I mean, the appointments on this thing are really great. Other than the fret work, you know, it's it was done right. It's probably been sitting a long time. You know, some of them might have dried out and lifted. I'm not sure if they were glued or not, but uh, that was the only issue on this guitar was just high frets. And a couple sharp fret ends and that was it though. It was a really easy guitar to uh, bring up to uh, a good playable condition. So, you know, again, like I said, I've never owned one of these. I've never seen one in the wild, never played one or heard one. Uh, so that's why I like to do these videos and I have friends that bring guitars out uh, and let me demo, you know, their instruments, you know, which is really cool of them to do. And, uh, you know, it gives people like us that have never tried one, never seen one. I've seen Tokais and some lawsuit guitars, you know, for sale out in the wild at, at garage sales and pawn shops. But a lot of times I'd walk past them because I was... I was under the impression that the quality was not that good. Uh, and I know some of them are not that good, but in this case, this thing is, is of good quality. Uh, it feels like a well-made guitar, you know? Like when you pick up a really cheap guitar, you can tell immediately if it's, you know, junk or not. But this feels like an American-made guitar, or, or a guitar that's of quality, I should say. It's got a nice light weight to it. Just a fun guitar to uh, play and the action's really tight. It's got a nice sustain to it acoustically. Really rings. That's the first thing I usually look for. 
I want to see what kind of sustain and what kind of voice it has. Is it resonant? That kind of thing. And uh, this one checks the boxes for me. It really does. The action's really nice on it. I haven't touched the nut or anything. The neck's straight. Uh, again, this really has not been played much at all. I probably played this more than the original owner has already. Uh, so those are fun ones to find. If you can dig one of those up, uh, that's really the best, right? Now, these are starting to become collectible. Uh, the vintage guitar market is, is crazy. It's right through the ceiling price-wise. Everybody's scooping these things up that have, you know, people that have money, they're cleaning house. They're buying them up. There's not a lot left that the normal guy could afford if you can find one. Uh, so a lot, of, a lot of guys are buying these. I mean, and they are becoming collectible. The lawsuit guitars are what they are. Uh, it's it's part of our guitar history. There's no denying it. And uh, they did make a lot of them, so they're out there. Uh, it didn't seem like there was a ton of them in the United States back, back in the day. It seemed to be more so in Europe, I think. Uh, but some of them did make their way over here, don't get me wrong. Uh, it's just not something that you would see, you know, on a daily basis here. And again, I've been doing this for, gosh, I don't know, 46 years now or whatever, almost 50 years. And I have never uh, seen one of these or played one of these. So uh, that's quite a thing, really, for me at least. I've played pretty much every guitar that I can think of, you know. And uh, it's fun to pick up something that's different. You know, a Strat's a Strat and a Telly's a Telly. And, you know, this is Strat-esque, of course, and Strat copied, but it is a little different. And it just feels a little different. Kind of reminds me of like an Ibanez or something, uh, the way it feels and plays. It, it plays really nice, like I said, and uh, it's nice lightweight. It's contoured, it feels really good to, uh, to hang on to. So, again, I'm not sure what these pickups are. I didn't tear the guitar apart. I was just, uh, you know, asked to uh, fix the frets, and that was pretty much it. So, I took it as far as I could, but I wanted to shoot a video of it and uh, at least let you guys hear what it sounded like and uh, try to describe this as best that I could. So if you are out there and you see one of these in the wild, you know it's probably worth picking up if you can get it cheap, which a lot of times you can get these real cheap. Uh, and you might just have to do a couple little things to it. And, uh, you know, you got a decent guitar and it's, and it's something that you normally uh, probably wouldn't have in your collection. Which is kind of cool, like I said, you know, if you get bored playing the same old thing all the time, then uh, this could be something different for you. And even to jump into the collecti collectible market without, you know, spending or uh, selling your house to buy one guitar, you know, that kind of thing. So I'm definitely going to uh, keep these on my radar. If I see any out in the wild, I'll probably... Uh, definitely pick them up and see what's going on with them and if it's something that I can fix or if it's something that's just unplayed like this. At least I know what it sounds like. I know what it, it's kind of going to take me, you know, for direction as far as the tone, playability, the balance. You know, it's just nice to, to have held one in your own hands. I get that. But, you know, again, I'm trying to uh, do these videos, so if you guys happen to see something like this for sale or in a pawn shop or at a yard sale, at least you know what it is, what you're looking at, and the potential of what it could be. Uh, I really appreciate these kind of videos myself because I collect guitars and I come across a lot of guitars that, you know, sometimes I'm just unsure of. 
you know, I don't, I don't know what kind of money I should spend on something like this. So it's nice to know at least what you're looking at. Is it quality? Is it junk? Is it worth picking up and just doing a few little things to? Uh, so this one checks the boxes. I am going to say that. Uh, as far as the uh, craftsmanship, fit and finish is great. Um, like I said, it's a hard tail. It's just a little different. It's kind of like a Tele Strat cross to me. The simplicity is really cool. Just the master volume, master tone. The switch is funky. I will say that. you gotta, you got to find that position 2 and position 4. There is a notch there, but it's not very deep. And it don't take much to trigger it to, or go by it, okay? So I just wanted to add that. And uh, that's pretty much it for this one. in tune when I uh, tuned it let's just say that so these are new strings and they're stretching and we all know that's part of the gig it seems to be quite well intonated too I mean I haven't even checked it I'm gonna let the owner do that he uh, that's definitely something he he does a lot of on his own guitar so I don't really need to mess with that it's usually just fret work or electrical stuff that I fix for him. But he does bring me a lot of instruments, and I really appreciate that. And uh, he, he'll bring me out gear, just random stuff to demo, too. Stuff that I, you know, have never seen or something he came across that, that he's never seen either. So it makes it nice, and I don't mind doing it. And uh, like I said, it... It passes some information along to you guys about this stuff that you may or may not have already uh, come across in your travels. So, again, uh, hopefully this helps. And, uh, you know, if you guys see something like this out there, you might want to stop and just pick it up and look it over. Uh, they don't seem to be really expensive. So, you know, if you can buy one of these cheap, or even a couple of them and make one guitar out of it or something, I think it would be worthwhile. And like I said, I have seen these uh, lawsuit guitars starting to take a little bit of a bite into the collectible game here. Uh, you know, a lot of guys grew up, you know, back in the 70s, 60s, 70s, couldn't afford a Fender, so a lot of guys played these, you know, and that's like a childhood memory. So, you know, I think a lot of guys are still kind of searching these out, you know. Hey, I had one of those when I was a kid, da-da-da. So they are starting to, like, enter the collectible scene. Uh, I know it was like a black eye on the uh, guitar scene uh, during the lawsuit days, but... You know, a lot of people didn't even want to touch one of these, but, uh, you know, it is what it is. What's done is done. It's part of history, and I think the best thing to do is kind of embrace it and just look at them at least and see if it's something that might be uh, worthwhile to uh, collect or add to your collection. I will definitely have one of these on my radar if I ever see one out in the wild. If it's uh, within reason, I'm probably going to pull the trigger on it. Yeah, I can't say much else about it other than uh, it feels like a really nice guitar. It feels like a brand new guitar. Uh, and it plays well, sounds well. Seems to have good uh, quality electronics in it. You know, I haven't taken it apart, but... You know, the, the, the tone pot and volume pot feel good. They're not, like, cheesy feeling. Everything feels kind of neat. The only thing that's funky is that switch, which I think it's kind of cool, really. It's different, and that's really the whole point of these. It's just something different that, you know, we normally don't hold in our hands. It's usually a Strat, Tele, Les Paul... You know, a lot of people, I know Squire has flooded the market, of course. Uh, so I think a lot of people have been buying 
those types of guitars when in reality I'm gonna just say it this guitar is better quality than a Squire right out of the box Squires I have to do the same thing I have to go through the frets tighten every screw on the guitar because they're never tight you know it, it depends on the model you get but this feels as good as a Mexican made Stratocaster or a USA made one and like I said you know if you take a Squire and just put a little TLC into it you can have something as great as an American one and I'm not saying American guitars are all great because they're not uh, the you know USA Fenders make duds too they're not all great guitars uh, Squire, Mexico, it's all the same thing. You gotta dig through the pile till you find the one that's right for you. Uh, but in any case, like I said, I hope this information helps and I uh, just wanted to share this with you, like I said, because it's nothing that I've ever been around and, and I've never really uh, researched a lot of these. So that's gonna be something I'm gonna look into in the future and uh, kind of watch this this guitar market as far as these lawsuit guitars is it going to be worth as much as a 59 burst i highly doubt it but it might be something uh just to pick up you know inexpensively now hang on to it for a while it could be worth a lot more in the end that's really not why i do it first and foremost is i want to play it does it play good does it feel good does it make me want to play it, you know, when I walk by it, uh, you know, that kind of thing. So I just wanted to point that out, that these can be of great quality, and uh, you just got to kind of look through the pile, like I said, till you find one that's right for you. And, uh, you know, like I said, if I found one of these out there, or a couple of them, or one that, you know, was kind of beat up and, I I would still probably pick it up just just to hang on to and see if I could, you know, like maybe find another one and make one out of it or something like that. Or just mod it, you know. There's always that too. The good old mod session. Well, anyway, guys, I won't hold you up anymore. I'd like to say thank you to all the uh, new people that have subscribed to the channel. Welcome aboard, folks. Try to get videos up, you know, every day if I can. Lately, that has not been the case, but I'm going to try to try to get things back online here. And, uh, you know, hopefully some of this info helps you guys out. And uh, keep looking. They're out there. They didn't buy them all yet. So, again, I hope this info helps, folks. And uh, you guys have a great day. We'll see you real soon. Be good. Okie doke.